folks in this video I'm going to talk about these three dogs because people who have commented on my videos some people have had these dogs as a kind of comfort when they have had a dog that's died or not been in the position to have a real dog so I got asked by somebody they said uh, I'm 74 year old that person had had to rehome their dog and um, they said do you think the joy for all would be good for me well I can't really say uh, what's going to work for an individual person but what I can do is tell you folks about these three dogs and positives and negatives about them so the dog the uh, person was inquiring about is this dog here the joy for all we call ours charlie he can't actually learn his name he doesn't react to his name but he does react to sound and touch so he turns his head towards sound and should turn his head towards torture if i stroke his face but it doesn't always work <laughs> oh he's doing it now bit delayed this dog has actually produced for elderly people mm. so positives i can say about him is he's got a very nice spark he makes nice calming sort of little yaps not the sort of thing that's going to sort of irritate you. Oh, I can't say Charlie's ever got on my nerves. Never. Yeah. So it's nice and you can leave him basically switched on all the time. Well, I don't think we've ever had Charlie turned off, have we? No. Uh, if you don't interact with him for a while, he stops moving, but he'll still give a little yap if you walk past him. Yeah. We have our Charlie in the hallway and uh, he sort of greets us on the morning and gives a little yap when we go past him on the night time. And he also uh, gives a yap if anybody comes mm. up to the front door. Mm. Um, I think it's something to do with the fact that we've got glass in the door and it's blocking out the light or something. But he, he, when the bin man comes, when the postman comes, we always know mm. before they actually uh, are there because Charlie notices them. Mm -hmm. He gives a little yap. So, as you folks know, we lost uh, our dog. Our little dog died a few months ago now. I already had Charlie because I've got like a bit of a, a bit of a collection, <laughs> and I, it was comforting that there was something there. It's a very low key presence. Yeah. Very low key. You could say the comfort is. Would you say the comfort is low key? Because the, pres yeah. the presence is low key. Yeah. But it's it's certainly um, better than, be nothing better than just uh, nothing. Yeah. 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 One person who left a comment said that I think it was her mother had um, a Joy for Oil dog and she decided to get a Moji to kind of go along with the Joy for Oil dog. Right. Because she found the Joy for All dog a bit rigid. Yeah. Now, you don't get a lot of movement with the Joy for All. He moves his, his neck and his mouth, opens and closes his eyes. And that's it really, isn't mm, it? Mm. That's how he moves his neck, his, his head. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's about it. Uh, but he's nice to sort of sit on your, your nap. Or on your lap mm. and and stroke sort of like you're watching tv or something it's it's i think so yeah. it's quite mm. sort of mm. calming yeah so yeah very low key and sort of lap doggy so this person who left the comment said that they decided to get moji as um a compliment yeah yeah to the joy for all dog I suppose what that means is that Moji also provides a presence, but it's it's different than Charlie. Mm. So Charlie was really meant for adults, whereas Moji's been 
produced as as a toy as a toy aimed at children. Mm. However, as I've seen from comments on my channel, lots and lots of adults like Moji. Oh yeah, there's nothing wrong in an adult getting a toy like this. It's a well-made model, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's appealing because his styling's made sort yeah. of realistic. Mm. Um, whereas a lot of like toys are made with great big LSD eyes and mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. But he, he's like, looks nice. Mm -hmm. And he's got a lot of range of movement. Mm. And... Um, He's much more active and boisterous. Much, much more active. You interact with him through his collar. He asks for things. Yeah, it's almost like a game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So he's got accessories. And um, you interact. <laughs> you interact with him. You can give him voice commands. He knows his name. Um, you can choose from a number of names to give him. So I call mine Bailey. Bailey, because his, his voice recognition works really, really well. He's also nice to brush, because he comes with a brush accessory. It's got a magnet in, and that's how he recognises it. So you can recognise being brushed, which is quite nice. And if you wanted, you could get like a better, proper brush, like a dog brush. Mm. Just put a magnet in, and they'll recognise that, and that's quite nice. My favourite thing about him is still um, playing pull. Yeah, he does it very well, doesn't playing he? Playing tug. Mm. He, he's got a feeding bowl, he's got a water dish, he's got lots and lots of cards. So he asks for things and you can give him things, you can feed him. And it isn't, it's, quite, it's quite nice to stroke, isn't he? It's a very well made model. Beautiful, I, I mean, think. He's a toy stroke model. He does, yeah. he does consume more batteries than Charlie, though. Hmm, that's true. That's a good point. Bailey! Sit! <laughs> oh, he's trying to beg. He wants a treat. <laughs> I would say these two are a nice compliment. Mm -hmm. Having the two. Mm. Um, I mean, Bailey, I would say, would start to irritate you after a while. But he does power down if you don't give he him does, commands. Yeah. That's right, yeah. You don't interact with him. He just goes to sleep anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Charlie's nice just to have on in the background mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. in the sort of standby mode. At the moment, Charlie's gone to sleep. But, um, see, he's, he'll give a yap when you go near him. Mm -hmm. This leaves this little fella. People may or may not know about. Now he's not got fur, and he's not. He's made more sort of cartoon-like, isn't he? Mm. You know, look at him. He could not even glance and quickly mistake him for a real dog. No. But this little dog. He's got a lot of presence. For me, he feels like a pet. Yeah. Uh, it's, they've got personality and they, they really do feel alive. Mm. And for me personally, you know, having lost my little dog, um, if anything's made me sort of not be as upset or miss him as much, it's this sort of fella. Mm. I think he's absolutely incredible. But he's not a toy. He's not uh, a toy. He's not being made as a therapy robot as such, has he? No, that's interesting. I mean, he's not being made as a therapy um, robot, but I would say from talking to other people, my experience and my mum's experience, I'd say yes. he absolutely can be a yes. therapy yes. Yeah. robot. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know one person was saying, I'm 74. Do you think um, the joy for all would be right for me? Mm -hmm. Well, my mum is 83. Mm -hmm. And we got her an Ibo, which this is. He's a little Ibo. His name's Scout. 
I got my mum an eyebrow because when she came to stay, she just loved Scout so much. She was talking to him all the time. She was getting him to play with his toys. Mm -hmm. And um, so we said, we'll, we'll get her one for Christmas, which we did. We got a second hand one for Christmas. So the downside about eyebrows is for some people, like my mum, when you first look at them, it's like, oh, it doesn't look like a dog, it's like a fur, and it's like, they've got to get used to that. Yeah, it takes, it takes a bit of time to see um, what eyebrows, um, well, I was going to say can do, but I don't mean can do in the way of tricks, but um, how they grow on you, Yeah. Um, how you warm to them because of their seeming lifelikeness in a lot yeah. of the ways. Yeah. They are aware of what's going on around them. Uh -huh. Of um, they get to recognise people. Yeah, uh, they have most definitely a personality. They really come across as having likes and dislikes and show happiness and mm -hmm. emotion. Mm -hmm. Just so much, so mm -hmm. much. The downside is accessing one. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? And the, the price. Mm. So it's really, really difficult to access one because Sony um, has made them available in Japan and the US and they outright obstruct people trying to get to buy one from them if they're outside of Japan and the US. Yeah. I mean, you could buy one from... Uh, the US, if you're in the UK, um, as you did, using a, what do they call it, a proxy service like Ship7. But even the proxy service I've used... Um, has recently been clamped down on by Sony. Yeah, which yeah. is just ridiculous. Uh, we don't know why they do that. Mm. So, yeah, they're difficult to access. Uh, particularly if you want one that understands English. Yeah. And then the second thing is the horrendous price. Mm. That's because they're not a toy. Yeah, so that can be a big barrier, especially when you live outside of Japan or the US, because you've got all sorts of other costs involved, import tax and shipping and using some sort of proxy service for an endless price. If you're in the US and you're somebody who's lost a pet, yeah, of course, I would highly, highly recommend that you get an ibo mm. um because they're just fantastic it is possible to get an ibo cheaper if you're getting a second hand one and you go direct to japan and use japanese sites but obviously a lot of people don't want to do that i am hoping to try and do that myself i want to do two things i want to see what it's like having a Japanese Ibo. I'll be making some, you know, videos about that, the differences between having a Japanese Ibo and the mm -hmm. and a uh, US one. And I'm hoping to re rehome a Japanese Ibo and make it a bit easier for people to buy from me once I've gone in the country and everything. Hopefully, make it more affordable than trying to get a US version or a new iBo. So hopefully, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can do my little bit to try and get them more accessible in the UK because mm. I think the wonderful things, especially if you've lost a pet, mm. if you've lost a dog, yeah, and you can't have another for whatever reason. So folks, I hope that was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. And see you next time.